Hey guys, my name is Frank and this is the Pothum programming video log and today I'm going to show you how to make an animated tile background. So this is just the tile map. There are no real objects on here. I'm just looping through an array with a bunch of values inside of it. This array right here and I'm drawing the corresponding images to my map. I also have, well I actually do have a couple objects. All these animations are governed by four objects right here. They are objects of the animator class and the animator class is going to be responsible for updating the frames of animation for each of these different animations. So I have the waterfall mouth, I have the waterfall middle, I have the waterfall bottom, and I have these background flowers here. So I have four different animations with four different frame sets and different delays of time between changing frames of animation. So let me go ahead and explain the animator class and how it works. So here's my animator class. It's really small. Um, it has a constructor, it just takes a frame set and a delay. So the frame set is just going to be an array of frames and the delay is going to be how many cycles of my game loop to wait before showing the next frame in the animation. So to understand what a frame set is, I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to show you where I actually hand in a frame set, which is right here. So this frame set has four frames in it and they're going to be frame one, two, three, and four. Now this one is going to appear in the map everywhere there is a mouth to a waterfall. So this is a one tile, this is a one tile, these are both one tiles. So everywhere a one appears, I'm going to run this animation. And that's why I have a one right here. So to show you the image, to give you an idea of where these uh, tiles are coming from, this is my tile sheet image. This is index zero, this is index one, two, three, and four, and so on. It goes all the way through to the end. So my animation for a one tile is going to look like one, two, three, four, and then it's going to repeat. It's going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's just going to repeat and cycle forever, basically. And anywhere there's a one, I'm just going to loop through this. So here's my one, two, three, and four. So that's what I'm handing in for the frame set value. Get back to my animator class. So I'm handing in the frame set, just an array of different frames. My delay is how long to wait between frames. Uh, count is going to be a counter. On every frame of my game or on every update to my game loop, I'm going to run this animate function. I'm going to increase count. I'm going to test to see is count greater than the delay. If so, set count back equal to zero and then increment up frame index. So frame index is just going to be the location. You could think of it as the playhead inside of my frame set. So if my frame set was this right here, one, two, three, four, frame index is going to be wherever inside of this array I'm currently displaying a frame. So if I'm displaying frame 2, frame index is going to be 1. And that's kind of confusing because it's 2 and 1, but we start at index 0, then we go to 1, then we go to 2, and then we go to 4. So to look at it over here, this is index 0, this is index 1. If my frame index is a 1, my frame value is going to be equal to 23 if I'm using this frame set. So let's go back up here and keep looking at this, how this works. So this is going to be my frame set. This is going to be the index of the playhead, so to speak, inside of my frame set. And frame value is going to be the value at the frame index inside of the frame set. All this code right here does is it says uh, frame index is equal to uh, a conditional. So if the frame index is equal to the frame set dot length minus one. So if the frame index is on the last frame in the frame set, then we're going to set frame index to zero. And if it's not equal to the last frame in the frame set, then we're going to set it equal to frame index plus one. So we're just going to add one to it. Then we're going to go ahead and update our frame value to equal the frame set at the current frame index after we just updated it. So that's going to drive our animation. So now let's take a look at how the rest of this works. That's the animator class. I come down here, I define my map. Certain values inside of my map have uh, an association with this array right here, the animations array. So this is going to be uh, using key value pairs. 1, 8, 15, and 22 are going to be keys. And these objects, the animator objects, are going to be the values. So everywhere in my map there's a 1. That's going to be used as a reference to this one right here in my animations array. Everywhere there's an 8, like here, that's going to be a reference to my 8 inside of this animations array. Same thing for 15 and 22. 
If I find a 22 that's right here, that corresponds to this tile right here, that's going to correspond to this tiny array. And as you can see, it's 22 and 23. If I look at index 22 and 23 inside of my tile sheet, that's going to be the animation for the moving flower, this tile and this tile. So that's why right here we have that moving tile because we have a 22 at that position in the map. Okay, so we have our animator class. We have our animations array that stores our animator objects. Now we actually have to do something with them. So down here, we're actually going to do something inside of the game loop. We're just going to come down, avoid all this, and don't really think about it too much. Um, right here, we're going to use a for each loop to loop through every key inside of the animations array. So if I come back up here, just note that this is called the animations array. So what I'm doing is I'm using object.values. I'm passing in my animations array. I'm saying for each animator object, and I, can, I don't have to call this animator, I could call this whatever I want, but for each object, and you can call it whatever you want, run this function here. This is gonna be an argument of this function with this arrow function here. And I'm just gonna say animator.animate. And if you remember, up here in the animator class, here's the animator class, animate is a, a function of the prototype of animator and every animator object will have this function on its prototype it just updates the playhead or the frame index and frame value of the animation object so down here what we're doing on every frame of our game loops execution or on every game cycle so to speak we're calling animator.update on every animator object inside of our animations array right here but that is not where this stops we still have to do one more key feature if i were to take this one line this is the last line that makes this uh, example program animated if i were to comment that out and refresh nothing would happen so what we're doing here is we're drawing our tile sheet this for loop right here just loops through every value in the map and it gets the value at the index that we're currently on in the for loop and this little if statement right here that I just commented out to stop the animation is just going to say if the value in the animations array exists. So remember, like I was saying, we have this animations array. We have 1, 8, 15, and 22. This mouth of the cave is going to be a 1. The falling middle section of the waterfall is going to be an 8. 15 is going to be the bottom of the waterfall where it hits this grass right here. And finally, 22 is going to be our moving flower. So if the value 1, 8, 15, or 22 comes up while we're looping through our map, so say I loop right to here, I get a 22, that is going to exist inside of the animations array. And that's what that if statement is doing. So if I come back down here, if the value, so say let's say 22, which would, I think that was right here, if 22 exists inside of the animations array and it does we're going to set value equal to the animator object at that position in the animations array dot frame value so we're basically going to get the frame value from that specific animator object in the animations array and we're going to set the value equal to its animation value so now that i've uncommented this line i can save it i can refresh and it's going to check on every time it loops over my map, my tile map, it's going to check for those different values stored inside the animations array, or it's actually an object with key values. Uh, every time it encounters an object inside of the animations object that has that key, it's going to go ahead and get the frame value of the animator object that is paired with that key. And we're going to get this nice animation effect. So that is how you animate tiles. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't go ahead and code this from scratch, but it seemed like it was simple enough and I just wanted to go over it real quick. So hopefully you guys got something out of this video. And of course, there's a link to the source code in the description of the video. Go ahead and give this video a like if you learned something and subscribe if you want more videos. Anyway, guys, you guys have a good day and I'll see you in the next video.